how are you viewers we have recently been uh, doing a revision of the november 2019 paper one and we actually have reached question b6 so today we basically just look at question b6 and question b6 reads figure b6.1 is a diagram showing the appearance of a coin immersed in water when viewed from above figure b6.1 is a diagram showing the appearance of a coin immersed in water when viewed from above so we can see the position of the eye here uh -huh. we can see that the media in which the eye is is air and where the coin is is water so in short uh, light if we see the arrows showing the rays of light light is coming from a dense medium to a less dense medium so we expect light to bend away from the normal when it moves from water to air so at the surface there it is actually bending then we can also see that the real depth to at which the coin is is 15 centimeters while the apparent depth the depth with which the eye thinks the object is at is 11.28 centimeters now let's let's go and check out the questions question b 6a is state snell's law state snell's law now when we look at snell's law there are various ways in which we can state snell's law but i think the easiest will be snell's law states that the ratio of sine i to sine r is a constant meaning that if you divide the sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction you should get a constant as long as the two medias are the same so if you have water and air the refractive index which is actually the ratio we are looking for will always be constant regardless of the angles taken okay yeah so snell's law states that the ratio of sine i to sine r is a constant so we're just going to write that now the ratio of sine i so it it states that the ratio of sine i to to sine r is a constant is a constant that's all so snell's law states that the ratio of sine i to sine r is a constant now here most laws of tell you that provided whatever provided here it is actually just the ratio which is a, which is a constant we move on to question b6 b6b and the question is what happens to the ray of light as at the surface of water in figure b 6.1 above okay what happens to the ray of light at the surface okay what happens let's check the diagram again uh -huh. so here what happens to the rays the rays of light if we look at this eh? 
we know that the rays the rays are coming from here okay and going here okay now what happens if we draw a normal there if we drew a normal we can see that actually the ray is bending away okay the ray is bending away from the normal so the ray if i drew a normal it's only that i can't draw a perfectly straight line but you can see it it's almost like it's doing this it's bending away away from the normal so if this was the normal you see that this angle here is smaller than the angle there so the ray is bending away from the normal the ray is bending away from the normal or the ray is bending okay so the ray is bending away from the normal the ray is bending away from the normal so we can now put that here the ray is bending away from the normal so the ray the ray is, there are many are uh, bending that bending away from the norm from the norm so the rays are bending in short the rays are bending away from the norm so the rays are bending then we go to C. Calculate the refractive index of water. Calculate the refractive index of water. Now, here, the issue that is there here is that uh, what we've been given, we've been given the depth, two depth. We've been given uh, the true depth. We've been given the true depth from which the coin really is and we've been given the apparent depth from which we our eyes think the coin is coming from okay so our eyes think that the depth of the coin is 11.28 centimeters while the actual depth is 15 centimeters uh, of this aspect of refraction is what causes us to think that a stream is shallow okay a stream is shallow the swimming pool is is not as deep as it seems but when you enter you find that it's deep so how do we find this it's by using the formula refractive index is equal to real depth over apparent depth real depth over apparent depth okay so now allow me to use an unconventional method. I know you, you're supposed to write everything. Real depth, apparent depth. So I'll use the symbols D, R for real depth and D, A for apparent depth. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say refractive index. Refractive index, N is equal to real depth over apparent depth so this is real depth this is apparent depth you have to write the actual words real depth divided by apparent depth please don't use such symbols okay uh -huh. now what we're now going to do is what is our real depth our real depth is 15 centimeters so n is equal to 15 centimeters divided by 11.28 centimeters now right here first before we even go any further centimeters and centimeters will divide and cancel out therefore leaving our answer with no units therefore refractive index has no units because the units that are there cancel out okay they've cancelled out now 
we continue and calculate uh, the value of 15 divided by 11.25 you'll find that on your calculator it is going to give you 1.329 1.329 whatever follows so i only get i only write my answer to three significant figures so i'll write it as 1.33 so this is my the refractive index of water then i transfer it i transfer it to where i'm supposed to. refractive index n is equal to 1.33 this is my refractive index okay this is the refractive index that i have found bringing us to the end of the question otherwise thank you very much don't forget to subscribe